Fireside Chats number one. The story of the BMW K100 RT and the F14 Tomcat. Let's get cracking. Good moto morning. Welcome to another episode of Kraken's Garage. I'm your host, Eric, and on today's episode, we're going to talk about uh, a fireside chat, something I do in the wintertime, and I'm going to share some pieces of my life with you and have a cup of coffee and tell you some of the stories that have crossed my bow over my lifetime, and uh, I'm enjoying my uh, coffee and my uh, Moss 42 mug. Thank you, sir. Cheers, mate. Got my coffee warmer here with my wood stove going. This little baby keeps my garage uh, roasty toasty all winter long. It's amazing. On Kraken's Garage, we discuss all good things on two and three wheels and uh, some scooter content and many moto motos as well. Beautiful people, welcome. So let's get to the story. Let's get cracking. I did a recap video for 2021, which was a montage of uh, a lot of pieces of my life and old pictures as well as over 50 videos. There were net pieces of, of my video content in that four minute video, which was kind of difficult to do. With that said, uh, there were many, many comments that were, people were very kind in commenting on that video. That was amazing. And uh, I, I thank each and every one of you for that. One in particular, Maz, and why I'm rocking his hat and cup is because he brought up, he was very astute. I flash fic many, many pictures for a, a absolute split second, and Maz picked up on one of them, of me, perched on a old BMW K100 RT. And I wanted to share that story with you about that. At this point in my life, I had, uh, I was living with my father and stepmother out in Long Beach, California. My father worked for McDonnell Douglas and was a pilot. He was a test pilot all of his life. Um, dur during that whole wonderful era of prop era, transitioned over to jet era and he was one of the few that survived all the engineers designing these wonderful planes and saying here go fly it and see if it works and uh, it was a high mortality rate in this career field but he managed to survive it and uh, he retired from the air force and took a job as senior test pilot for mcdonald douglas out of lakewood california and I, I had just gotten out of high school and then I went to Cal State Long Beach and, and I got out of college and I went back home to Virginia. I miss my sisters and my mother and uh, uh, California. I was a duck out of water in, in SoCal because I'm a redneck rocking a mullet and uh, you know I was raised to uh, go hunting and do all these things and, and Southern California was not my scene, though I loved it and did some surfing and things like that. So. I came back home to Virginia and every, every year, maybe once or twice a year, I would fly back home to California and ride motorcycles with my mother and stepmother and father. If you've ever been to Southern California, we would hit all the usual places, Ortega Highway, Cook's Corner, the Rock Store, the normal places that uh, all motorcyclists visit out there. You can only go north, south, and east because everything west is ocean. So, uh, But California has some of the most beautiful riding I've ever ridden in my life. It's absolutely amazing. So I borrowed dad's motorcycle. He had just bought that K100 RT. And if you take a look at that picture, I'll throw it up here of me sitting on it. He was already starting the transform transformation of that bike and he had a uh, custom Corbin seat made to kind of look like a gunfighter seat. Now being a pilot, he got the bright idea of wanting to style this bike after a uh, jet airplane. So back then, BMW didn't make any um, RS versions or the sport models. You had to kind of make your own. So dad was reconforming this bike to make it look sporty. It has a Corbin gunfighter seat that kind of locked you in and the windshield was from Aeroflow. Paige Ortiz, founder of Aeroflow Windshields, was good friends with my parents and it, it wasn't unusual to see him kicking around on a ride with us or riding out to visit him. On the other side, it's sporting a handcrafted muffler made by Matt Capri of Luftmeister in Long Beach. And I'll share a picture of that here. And uh, it says to flip, and, and that's a short name. My dad hated his name. His first name was Alvinus, if you spelled it phonetically, but it was Alvinus, and he hated it. And his middle name, same as mine, is Philip. And he went by Flip, and I assume that has something to do with uh, his 
test piloting skills during his uh, development as a test pilot. So Flip was his nickname his whole life. I'll throw a picture up here. So Matt Capri of Lufmeister in Long Beach uh, had been tuning BMW since he helped build Reg Pridmore's Bay Daytona winning boxer superbike in the 70s. The name means Air Master in, in German. The firm from Long Beach, California has been making K-series models blow harder and uh, faster since 1988. He topped the 200 mile barrier on a K bike at Bonneville. Matt doesn't have a really good stellar uh, reputation in the motorcycle field, but that's another story for another day. Pop loaning that bike to do some R&D and make pipes for K bikes. So how the rest of the story is, my parents were both very active in BMW MOA, and MOA was an acronym for Motorcycle Owners Association. My mother wrote many articles for MOA during her tenure, and uh, Pop wanted to paint that bike like a fighter jet that the Air Force had boring gray planes, so he opted to do an F-14 Tomcat theme. I should mention that there are no vinyl wraps back then, and what you're looking at is hand-painted regarding the decals on this particular bike. The Navy always always has, still does have, the coolest pain schemes. He called up a friend that was an active F-14 pilot and rode that bike down to Miramar for a photo shoot that eventually made the cover of BMW MOA in May of 1989. The Navy or Department of Defense, I don't remember, uh, was one or the other, got a case of the uh, arts about it, let's say, and about one of their F-14s being filled with a German motorcycle. Dear sir, curse you, letters went back and forth, but they eventually got it sorted. And here's the cover of the magazine. And that's Pop's bike right there. I'll throw a picture up here so you can see it better. So Big Maz, if you were riding a K100LT back then, my guess is you were probably a member of the BMW MOA Association and quite possibly you have seen my father's motorcycle a very long time, what is it, 30, 40 years ago, uh, you were looking at my dad's motorcycle on the cover of that magazine. My parents were very innovative folks uh, in life and me, I'm just the skippy son that uh, with the mullet riding around on my RD400 back then, that's all I could afford. I was just out of college and starving and trying to figure out what I want to do with my life. So to be clear, when I share some of these points that uh, we're, we're talking about or whatever, I was a starving, broke young man and trying to make my way through the world just like any other uh, folks back then. I just hit the lottery with my parents. So it was fun to be around people that inspired me to do what I do in my garage now. And uh, I wish Pop was still here to uh, help me with some of my builds. It would be a lot of fun. I, a uh, honorable mention is Charles Bonner was the staff photographer for Douglas Aircraft, a friend of Pop's, and he was kind enough to drive down to take these beautiful pics and deserves to be remembered. And a hearty shout out to Charles. And this is one I need to get matted and framed, but that's one of the original prints. I'll throw a picture up here from that photo shoot. So that's the story of the F, the BMW K100 LT and the F14 Tomcat. <laughs> How unusual is that? It's a crazy world we live in. Let me know if you enjoy these fireside chats. I will share tidbits and uh, chapters of, of my life on two wheels uh, that may or may not be of interest, so they may be a stinker, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this type of uh, content. There's no filming, there's no action going on. Well, I I did fart around with my uh, Insta360 uh, X2 or whatever it is. I hope you enjoyed kind of uh, the interesting uh, views I was giving you as I was setting the fire up in my uh, wood stove to tell this story. And this week's shout out goes to a un very unusual channel that I know you're gonna enjoy. His channel is called Uncle Voodoo. His name is Tom, he hails from Virginia, a proud uh, member of the uh, Old Dominion here in Virginia. I'm very proud of this guy, he does a wonderful job. He uh, is rocking a Himalayan 400, a uh, Honda Cub uh, 125, actually a Honda Monkey 125. Uh, he has 50 videos out. He has 5,270 subs with only 50 videos. And uh, Tom tells a story. He's a wonderful storyteller, and Tom tells a story on every one of his videos. Maybe about Sasquatch, so Greg, you may want to check him out on that. And it may be about ghosts and goblins or whatever. Uh, he goes camping and he rigs up all of his bikes to do these things. He does an incredible job. So I hope you go check out Tom and give him a sub. If you do, let him know that Kraken sent you. 
And with that said, Bullet, he's here to remind me that it's time to wrap up this video. If you would like to become a Patreon, the link is down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more in the future, hit that subscribe button right down there in the corner. And remember, folks, go riding. It's good for you, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Amazing.